Sveiki visi. Hello everybody. Today we have another uh, Tribe of AI and Artificial Intelligence Association of Lithuania meetup. And today we even have two amazing presentations. The first one is going to be topological navigation graph. The second one is image generation for object detection. So I'm so happy to have uh, two speakers today, but uh, first let me show you, uh, let me introduce myself and show you the agenda. So my name is Dovidas, I'm the, uh, like one of the organizing, uh, one of the people organizing these meetups. Uh, I am the president of the Artificial Intelligence Association. I'm also a machine learning team lead at Vinted, uh, founder of Tribe of AI and uh, data science uh, lead at Turing College. So today our agenda is as follows. Uh, first, we, go, we are going to have some community updates. I'm going to tell you about uh, the new uh, developments in, in uh, the association and in Tribe of AI. Then we are going to have the first presentation, Topological Navigation Graph by Povilus. Uh, after that, we are going to have a short Q&A session. Uh, then uh, Darius is going to present image generation for object detection. Again, uh, the Q&A at the end. And finally, we are going to have just uh, the, some like type of uh, simulated networking in the Q&A channel. Uh, so you can you can see that I, I posted the link already in the YouTube and you can see the link right here uh, slides dot the top top of the screen slides dot app uh, Google so you can ask all of your questions both for the participants for the presenters today and for any other uh, topics for the discussion we are going to spend maybe five to ten minutes at the very end just you know uh, talking about things which uh, are relevant and interesting for you. So let's uh, begin with the community updates. So one, uh, one thing which I'm very happy about is that this is already the third joint meetup uh, by Artificial Intelligence Association and uh, Tribe of AI. So we are very happy that uh, these, these meetups finally brings, bring the, both communities together and uh, like uh, deliver value for uh, every everyone in the AI community in Lithuania. Uh, we also encourage you to become a member if you like what the association is doing. Uh, please become a member. You're looking forward to having more members, and uh, we are thinking hard about uh, like what we can do to support our members. And at the same time, we we rely on the members to. Uh, for working in various uh, joint projects with, uh, with governmental institutions, with uh, internal projects, with our partners, etc. Uh, in addition to that, Tribe of AI is looking for mentors for the AI Academy. So I used to be the only mentor there. Now we are expanding and uh, I'm looking forward to onboarding new people and starting more classes in the Tribe of AI, uh, AI Academy. So if you have experience in data science, machine learning, uh, deep learning, uh, like fill the form, you'll find the slides later posted at uh, that wherever you found this presentation, this event uh, like link, you'll find the presentation to the slides and there you'll find a form to fill in if you want to become a member and help the next uh, batch of uh, machine learning engineers uh, in, in the making. Uh, finally, Turing College is uh, just like already started their first uh, data science course. So uh, I'm also part of the Turing College team. So big props for uh, for them for starting the course. And uh, if you're interested, check it out. And next, the next batch is uh, starting in about a month. So if you're interested, uh, check it out. And like that's that's the bliss of. Uh, Today's, uh, today's updates, we are ready for our first presentation by Pavlos Benusius from Neurotechnology. He's going to talk about the topological navigation graph. So let me switch to uh, our chat. Pavlos, uh, could you start your screen share?
Yep. It's all good. Uh, you're ready to go, Pavelos. Well, this is everything all right. Okay, it's uh, yeah, thanks for uh, noticing. Let's, uh, I'm hearing the sound perfectly. Uh, let me, let me try to fix it. Give me a minute. Sorry for technical difficulties. Uh, yeah, give me a minute. Trying to. Uh... Can you try again right now? Wallace, can you try again and now? Uh, do you hear me now? Yes, should be okay. Let's uh, let's continue. I think we had some technical difficulties. Could you start over your presentation from the beginning, please? From the beginning? Yes. Okay. So, it seems that we have some technical difficulties due to sound. So, 
I will restart presentation. So my name is Povelos. I'm from Neurotechnology, and today I will talk about uh, topological navigation graph. Uh, first, I would uh, like to introduce uh, about company with few words. The Neurotechnology company was founded in the 1990, just after independence uh, in Vilnius, Lithuania. And uh, currently, we are one of leading providers of proprietary algorithm-based uh, biometric identification solutions for multiple modalities like fingers, faces, irises, and voice. And uh, winner of many prestigious awards in that area. Uh, besides, uh, we are doing research and development of artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, and brain-computer interface projects. So uh, this uh, presentation uh, would consist of two parts. In the first uh, part, I will try shortly to introduce uh, what is simulation learning in uh, autonomous robot navigation. And uh, afterwards, uh, I will proceed to the main part uh, about the topological navigation graph framework. So, in reality, actually, is complex thing and programming how to behave in every situation. Probably it is uh, not the best uh, solution. It is very laborious and, and in general unfeasible because you cannot predict what, what can happen. And uh, maybe a better idea is to show how to behave by demonstration or program by demonstration. This is what imitation learning is about. Let you us assume that we have a robot and we manually drive that robot uh, according to some trajectory and during uh, every moment of time we collect pairs x i ways x uh, robot perception or image of robot camera and i is a motion command uh, human demonstrator has given uh, to, to robot, for example, Almost, I can... so sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm hearing yes. that we still have some technical difficulties. Uh, let me try to figure out, uh, before we continue, let me try to figure out how to fix it uh, so we can hear the, the sound perfectly. By the way, one okay. thing which might fix it is if you can use uh, a headset. So do you have, the, do you have heads, heads, headphones? Uh, which you could use maybe that, because I'm hearing that uh, people are hearing a strong echo and it's hard to understand what you're saying. Currently, I don't know how to solve this technical problem. Uh, I think we can. I think it was uh, becoming better lately. So maybe we can continue right now. I'm. I'm. I'm keeping. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, the voice quality so that it's. Uh... But at least you are hearing okay. Yes, I just have to turn off my mic uh, because I think my mic might be part of the problem. So I'm going to turn off my mic and uh, we are going to monitor. I'll let you know if everything, if uh, something is wrong. For now, I think we can continue. Okay, so I, I'll continue then. So let's say we, we have a uh, we trained neural network which models uh, motion command as function uh, from uh, X by minimizing some cost function. I expect that this neural network can repeat demonstrated behavior. Actually, such approach of imitation learning has quite long history. Um, more than 30 years ago, uh, in neural information processing systems was published paper uh, about uh, autonomous land vehicle in neural network, or Alvin, which uh, proposed architecture we see in the right uh, side of, of uh, of this light, so this architecture accepted input image and uh, image of laser rangefinder, and uh, output at uh, basically a direction how how strongly you need to turn the steering wheel. 
So more than 30 years ago, more than, more than 30 years after that, still imitation learning is a pretty hot topic in, in the major machine learning conferences and journals. And one of recent results, it is called uh, conditioned imitation learning. Uh, uh, the model uses convolutional backbone and uh, the, their idea is to use uh, different uh, heads for different actions. For example, actions are understood as going straight or uh, turning left or right. So this model showed uh, quite uh, good performance, not only in simulator, but also in, in the real robots. Another approach uh, uh, developed uh, and uh, tested in our company, uh, also it is imitation learning algorithm. The idea is to use object detection, uh, neural network to detect not physical objects, but uh, to driving distance, driving uh, a direction a rectangle represented by one or, or several several rectangles and in this video we see how this system works in dynamic environment uh, conditions so what imitation learning results tells us that actually it allows to extract the controllers from from demonstration data without explicit programming and uh, we, we do not need that explicit programming to, to handle different situations however if we need goal directed behavior such uh, regular imitation learning methods are not enough and the uh, possible solution to this problem is tng so in tng we assume that we have environment uh, of uh, intersecting trajectories as uh, depicted in the figure in the slide for example we have four trajectories blue red brown and green and uh, all of these trajectories have intersections so we can train imitation learning controllers separately for each trajectory uh, those controllers are denoted as f f theta one f theta two F theta three and F theta four. So we expect that once these controllers are trained, we can place the robot uh, inside any corresponding trajectory and the robot can follow this trajectory by itself. But obviously it is not enough to, for, for uh, entire goal-driven navigation system. And additionally, what we need are classifiers. And so the first set of classifiers G allows to topologically localize robot uh, within this uh, this trajectory so classifiers assign given the input image uh, to which trajectory that image belongs so if robot is uh, placed in any trajectory by querying these classifiers we can know in what trajectory the robot currently is and if we give the goal image to the robot uh, in, this, in the same way, we can query those classifiers and, and assign in trajectory where that goal is located. So what additionally, we need another set of classifi classifiers uh, H, which recognize intersection of trajectories. So the purpose of those classifiers is that, uh, for example, if a robot needs to travel from a blue trajectory to a green trajectory, once that is robot is in intersection and classifier H recognizes that we can switch controller from blue trajectory controller to green trajectory controller and robot smoothly will exit uh, blue trajectory and enter another uh, in this case green trajectory so final component is uh, function goal reaching, reaching function R which determines when to stop so this function is it's, it is queried only in the last trajectory and this it matches input image and given goal image so summarizing topological navigation graph represents environment as graph composed of perception and action components perception components are traject action components are trajectory controllers 
and perception controllers are classifiers. And so given uh, this structure, uh, we can perform planning just uh, as regular planning in the graph and compute path of controllers, which eventually leads to, to a given goal. So if you would like to know more about this method, you can uh, read the article which is given here. Currently, this, is, uh, this article is being reviewed in one uh, of robotic journals. And uh, maybe I can show how this method works in practice. So first, first we will give a robot a goal image. We select some target area. And, and uh, try to reach that area. So it seems that uh, it, target is in, in node 3. And now robot uh, computed its path according to, to TNG and is trying to reach uh, uh, this uh, image. So robot goes, goes and goes and uh, now it switches to another controller. It is quite long movie, so I will jump in, in this. So robot now will switch to another controller again. And eventually, in the end, we see that uh, given target image is approaching, and robot finally will match its uh, goal reaching function and stop. So here, the robot stopped and goal was reached. So that's all about TNG. The, uh, in summary, like a uh, good size of this method that it, it is based on the, uh, any reactive imitation learning controller and the array of developing those controllers are rapidly evolving field. So it is framework and, and many, many probably new recent results would be better to use. Also, it allows to incrementally add new trajectories to the graph by just training not entire graph, but just what areas corresponding to to include that uh, trajectories. And the rough box of this method is that uh, it's still based on special assumptions like environment of intersecting trajectories. It, it, it is not like free navigation system and also uh, it, it has problem with, with generalization. It needs to be retrained of, of every, every environment. So probably that's all that uh, I would like to, to, to transmit final message that uh, we would like to, to if, if, if you are talented and motivated people and would like to work in biometrics, robotics, and or brain computer interfaces, Please let us let us know, and probably we can arrange a meeting. So, if you have some questions regarding to uh, presented material, please let me know. And this presentation is is, is over. I hope you get what I what, what I talked about. Uh, thanks, Paulus. Uh, thanks, Paulus. Thank you all. And now, if you have any questions, now if you have any questions, uh, Pavlos, could you please uh, turn off turn off your mic for a second? I am hearing quite an echo. Yeah, thanks. So now, if you have any questions, uh, you can answer. Oh, we have a question that you can hear anything. This one is solved. Uh, very good question. So if you have any questions for Pavlos. Uh, like spend uh, we are going to uh, hear from you for the next uh, couple of minutes 
Meanwhile, I'll just uh, like to reiterate that uh, Neurotechnology is an amazing Lithuanian company uh, doing so much for uh, like AI in Lithuania. So really great guys. Uh, I'm like impressed by every single one of uh, like people I meet from this company. So waiting for your questions for a couple of more minutes now. And uh, if you don't have any, then we'll move to the next presentation by Darus. Paulus, if you could uh, stop your screen sharing, I'm going to show you all if you have any questions. Oh, that's the wrong one. Should be slides QA. There is a question from uh, Arnas. Do you take AI and robotics students for internships? So, Pavelas, question for you. I'm turning my mic off. So, thank you for the question. The answer probably would depend on students. Uh, so, if you would like to, to, to take an internship in, in neurotechnology, you can send us your CV and your motivation letter. And prob probably we can contact. That is, that is the answer. Thanks, Paulus. Let's wait if you have any more question last uh, minute. Doesn't seem so. So, if you have uh, more questions for uh, neurotechnology for Povilas, uh, like keep them keep them posted. We can cover some of them at the end during the networking part. Now we can move uh, to Darius, and uh, Darius, please take over. Okay, just a second. Can you hear me well? Okay, do you hear me? Can I start? Hello. Yes, it's all good. Uh, just to avoid the echo, I'm okay. turning my mic off. It's all good. You can start. Okay, so I will start. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Darius Grigolas, and I'm happy to present to you today. Uh, this is actually was my master thesis, uh, how you can uh, generate images uh, which can be later used for object detection uh, network to train it or other types of uh, deep learning networks. So uh, at the beginning, uh, a bit about myself. I did my bachelor's in Konus University of Technology in Robotics, uh, then did my master's uh, in Denmark in robot systems and also worked a bit as a, uh, in a company Invatec in Denmark where I helped to improve uh, uh, industrial machines which uh, handles soiled uh, garments um, and uh, applied some machine learning uh, methods uh, to improve their, pro their, their machines and currently working at 1D Works as a machine learning engineer. So, the, first of all, I present uh, the problem why you might uh, want to generate uh, images uh, and uh, what are the current uh, rendering techniques of images and uh, also a newer technique uh, uh, 
which is called generative adversarial networks and how they can be used uh, for creating images and uh, how the, the whole framework uh, using these networks uh, I tested and uh, what results I got. So to begin with, uh, in recent years, uh, deep learning methods uh, made a huge progress in computer vision. Uh, now you can uh, segment image uh, and and uh, and find out where the road is, where the trees are, where the pavement, with quite high accuracy. And in the robotics, it's it made it easier to instant segment uh, each. Uh, object um, and it made it easier to to handle uh, objects which you can you see so but one uh, annoying problem with deep learning that if you want to apply it on your own problem uh, for a more specific problem uh, you need a lot of annotated image samples uh, if you want to uh, to get a high accuracy and uh, and uh, when you're applying it in more specific areas, for example, if you want to detect uh, this duck or this uh, candle, uh, uh, it requires, uh, you won't find usually publicly available data set uh, uh, online or, uh, or you have on your own like a very little amount of these samples. And if you want to create uh, this data set, it is quite a, a time consuming process because you need to make the images, you need to label them uh, by hand usually. Uh, and this also can be quite expensive if you're doing this in a company. Uh, and uh, there are different types of uh, uh, annotations uh, and uh, the more detailed annotations uh, you need, uh, the more time you need to spend for uh, every sample. So um, my suggestion is uh, like to use a simulated environment uh, to create those images, which you can later use for training uh, object detection network or other networks. Uh, and it's, uh, I would say, a great way because you can uh, easily configure the whole environment and you can move the objects, change illumination, uh, change uh, the, 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 the background, uh, and it also, you can automate the whole process, uh, how you uh, to create the process of creation of these images. And also a nice bonus feature that you can extract uh, all the information uh, about objects in the image from the simulator. And in that way, you basically automatically label uh, all images and with uh, accuracy. But one huge disadvantage of using simulated environment uh, is that, that the images made in simulated environment real world images uh, that well. And that is basically the reason why it's not used that often in, in such case. Uh, to, to minimize this issue, you could try to use like uh, current rendering techniques like ray tracing which you can see a sample here. Um, it can generate really high quality and nice looking images, but there are some disadvantages using this method. One of that uh, you need to uh, uh, handcraft uh, the each environment. Uh, that means that you need to um, describe all the properties of every object quite accurately. So the, the, the rendering uh, would be as, as good as possible. And second issue is that this can also take quite some time to make a, a lot of amount of images as, uh, for example, a uh, Pixar company, when they're rendering their movies, uh, it, it takes them uh, up to like, like 24 hours to render a single image. So it's, if you need like 10,000 images or something, it can take uh, quite some time. So uh, in 2014, uh, a new uh, type of networks called generative to serial networks were developed, uh, which are able to create uh, 
uh, images from any, basically any kind of uh, input. It can be just random numbers, it can be another image, it can be a text or something else. And um, this allows us to uh, basically whatever we want from whatever we, uh, input you give. So in the original paper, they tried to make faces and you can see on the right here, uh, a real woman face and uh, the faces the network managed to generate. So they are not perfect in, in this, uh, but they're still uh, look similar. And this kind of networks uh, works pre pretty interestingly. Uh, it actually have uh, two networks inside and uh, they are actually competing with each other. So there's a generator network uh, with which, which task is to just generate uh, some fake data, fake images or, or something. Um, and uh, its task is to uh, be uh, to make fake images look as similar to the real images or target data also uh, as possible. And there's a second uh, network which uh, task is to distinguish what is fake and what is real. And uh, based on this uh, output from this network, we can train both of them and uh, try to improve both of them. So this is like a never ending process where generator tries to make uh, better and better uh, fake images and the uh, uh, discriminator tries to uh, be better at distinguishing uh, real from, uh, from fake. So theoretically, if you run this for infinity, it would like infinitely improve. <laughs> and there are some pretty interesting examples how these kind of networks can be used. Uh, for example, you can uh, uh, create bird images based on uh, bird description. Um, you can uh, change uh, a sketch to a cat. <laughs> And you can also make, try to make a bread cat. <laughs> you can also remove backgrounds from in real time uh, and, and so on. And these kind of networks uses pair data sets, uh, which means that uh, in a training process, uh, you give samples uh, and, and you know how the output should look like uh, uh, exactly. So you know what is the input and how the output should look like. But uh, this is not always uh, desirable, as sometimes you might not know how exactly should uh, the output look like. Uh, for example, if you want to change a cat image to a dog image, you don't know how exactly the dog should look like, because uh, there's no real examples in the world. So to cope with this problem, there's a unsupervised GANs which uses unpaired data set, and uh, you can uh, do quite crazy <laughs> things with these kind of networks. For example, you can change a, a horse to a zebra or uh, vice versa. You can change uh, summer, uh, like uh, summer to winter. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can see an example how a, a famous painter would, would uh, paint the image you gave and so on. And, and this uh, unsupervised GANs allows us to make this framework where uh, we can change simulated image images uh, to look more realistic. And uh, this can be done like in, this can be done like in three steps. We basically first uh, we can we provide uh, some simulated images and some uh, real images. Uh, to the GAN and, and uh, train it to change uh, simulated image to real image. And after the training, we can provide uh, more, uh, more and different uh, simulated images and it will make them look more realistic. And because we're using a simulated environment, we can extract uh, needed uh, information from it in this work, uh, I used instant segmentation network, so I instructed instant segmentation masks and trained the, the network to uh, to detect and, uh, and segment the objects. And after the training, uh, 
you can provide real images to this uh, instant segmentation network and it will be able to detect uh, objects in real world even though it was trained on images in uh, uh, with images uh, uh, synthetic images so to test to test this framework i first had to uh, find a suitable uh, candidate candidate uh, GAN network for, for this uh, and I also evaluate them visually and also quantitatively. Uh, in this case, I used fresh inception distance. And uh, after I found out, uh, found out a suitable GAN, I, I trained the YOLAT instance segmentation network twice on two different data sets. The first one consisted of uh, uh, simulated images, which I got from a simulated environment. And the second data set is uh, uh, synthetic images, which were made uh, from the simulated images. And this uh, allows uh, to compare, uh, does uh, synthetic images improve for the quality of images and, uh, uh, and the network manages to detect real objects better. So in a first uh, experiment, uh, I, cho I chose a city environment and I tried to uh, change a simulated city image uh, to look more realistic. And uh, I gather some images. The final amount of images are, is quite low and there's a few problem, a few reasons for this. Like, for, first of all, my simulated environment was too monotonic. Uh, so the buildings were too uh, similar to each other. They all have the same color. Uh, and the second big problem I found out that <laughs> my simulated environment doesn't have cars uh, in it. And in real world, it's basically impossible to make an image of a street without cars in it. So it did, that had some <laughs> interesting effects on the training. So I trained one network called You Got It. Uh, and uh, after getting uh, this input image, uh, the network produced this image. And you can see like, in the center, it tries to make a shape of a car, even though it, uh, it was not trained uh, specifically to uh, add cars to the, to the image. And this is because uh, my set of real images had many cars in, in, in it. So that's why the uh, final data set had to be reduced. So uh, on this final data set, uh, three networks were trained. You got it, cycle GAN and uh, unit. And uh, this is the results I got. So the first row shows uh, the input image these networks got. And, uh, and the following row shows what output it produced uh, for those images. So you can see that uh, cycle GAN and you got it did a pretty terrible job and uh, messed up uh, the, the images quite badly. And it's hard to understand even if it's an image of a city or, or something else. And uh, Unity did a, a bit better job. Uh, most images you can still see that it's a city, um, and it in like in this example you can see that the the building wall uh, color was changed quite consistently without without big errors, and the windows were changed with different types, and in this uh, for the image. Uh, the the sky I would say looks more realistic the, than in the input image, but that's can be arguable. So these uh, three networks were also evaluated uh, quantitatively um, using uh, Fresh inception distance. Basically, we have this uh, baseline number two hundred twenty two, which uh, uh, and uh, when we compare synthetic images to real images, and if, this, if the number we get is higher, that means that uh, images look worse uh, than the simulated images. But if it's lower, it means that the, the synthetic images created uh, uh, look more similar to real images. 
and only one network unit managed to lower this number more slightly. So because of this, it was decided to continue only with this network. And for the second experiment, uh, I chose uh, an environment which I had much more control of. Uh, I made a real environment with robot arm and some objects on the table. Um, and also had the same environment in uh, simulated uh, simulation, which looks uh, a bit similar. And made some uh, around one and a half thousand images uh, of in both environments. And then having these images, I trained the Unity network. And this is the results I got. So the first row is the input image I gave to I give to the network. Uh, second row is the output uh, of uh, unit network. So this is synthetic images. And last row is just as a reference, some random real images. So uh, you can see that uh, a unit network managed to improve the colors of all the objects, basically, uh, and made it look much closer to real colors, and uh, also added some uh, shadows in the on the ground, added some uh, shininess on the table, which are not present in simulated images. It also added. Uh, this uh, line cuts if you look closely on the table uh, yeah which are also not present in the simulated image but are in uh, real images and it also managed to handle correctly an image without a robot arm um, it didn't made any artifacts even uh, the network wasn't trained uh, on images without robot arm in it. And one more thing which fascinated me is that I modeled, uh, in simulation, I modeled the uh, lunch box just as uh, two uh, boxes on, to on top of each other. And uh, the network managed to understand that it should try to add these uh, small, if you will close to it, like small tabs uh, to close the box which are re in a, in a real there are in real uh, lunch box and uh, although the result looks quite nice there are still some uh, errors in them so for example um, there's this black spot around the candle and uh, there's also black area near the table here and uh, uh, the uh, table leg is uh, transparent in some places. And also this whole pattern on, uh, on the table in some areas is not completely aligned. So here you can see uh, 360 <laughs> images around the table. So uh, our image provided to the network, but uh, synthetic image is produced. And uh, as a comparison, real image, uh, yeah. And uh, these images were evaluated quantitatively also. And uh, you can see that uh, from the baseline uh, of value of 124, it reduced this value to 81, which is quite a significant uh, reduction um, and that means that these uh, these uh, synthetic images generated by unit network is are actually look more realistic. And uh, having generated these images, uh, insta segmentation masks were extracted from the. Then I I, I could uh, train the Yolux uh, insta segmentation network on two types of only simulated images, and this. Uh, these data sets have the same number of images and the positions from where the image is done is the same because uh, simulated images were made, uh, synthetic images were made from those simulated images. And uh, these, you can see here, the results of both versions of the OLACT network. In the top, as previously, is the input images. And um, 
In the middle uh, is the results of YOLOC network trained on simulated images and uh, in the bottom uh, YOLOC trained on synthetic images. So you can see that uh, YOLOC trained on synthetic images, so the bottom row, achieves higher confidence uh, in predictions, for example, lunchbox 0.88, 0.9, um, yeah. and then uh, it it also has less duplicates of the same objects, for example, candle detected once, here detected twice. The same as goes for this robot arm, it detected twice and here only once. And um, the segmentation masks are much finer and, uh, um, and better. As you can see here, uh, maybe here, um, and also there's less misprodictions. For example, here uh, it detected ro robot arm, uh, although it's a tablet for to control the robot arm, and haven't detected it here. Um, and here you can see again a 360 around the table, so you can compare uh, how synthetic images improve. Uh, YOLAC instant segmentation network. So it, it, it does much less uh, errors, you could say so. And the segmentation masks are, are finer. So both of these versions were also evaluated uh, by calculating uh, average precision. And you can see that uh, average precision for masks uh, improved by uh, almost 10%, which is uh, quite a significant improvement, and uh, in all areas it, uh, it improved the uh, overall accuracy of uh, pr predictions. So, uh, for our future words, what could be improved uh, here is that uh, it would be interesting to see how uh, GAN can handle more dynamic uh, environments where in the simulation environment there are more objects moving, maybe illumination changes a lot uh, and things like that. Then also in this work I still generated uh, not that big amount of uh, images, only around one and a half thousand. Uh, and um, uh, it will, will be also interesting to compare uh, a network trained on only synthetic images to a network trained only on real annotated data uh, to see how big of a gap is between uh, synthetic uh, data and uh, and real data. Maybe you can even skip the real data and use synthetic data only. So to conclude, uh, GAN can improve the quality of simulated images um, and uh, but although you need to remember that you need to balance the data set which is used for training GAN, uh, as you saw with, uh, in an example in the city environment and cars, and that you can use this uh, proposed framework uh, which uses Unity Network uh, to, to basically create a large amount of annotated images which can be used in uh, other deep learning networks to train them. And this can be object detection, it can be uh, instant segmentation, it can be uh, even uh, depth, uh, image depth, uh, uh, or, or other things. Yeah, so thank you for your attention, and hope if you have questions. Thanks, Darius. Let me switch to my screen share and I'll show you the questions. so far let's wait a few minutes 
they usually appear people who need some time to you know digest all the new information uh, by the way yeah, I, 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 have, that yeah. I, I have a question I noticed yeah, uh, noticed that uh, okay your your uh, uh, like generated images had tried to make cables beneath the table uh, have you noticed uh, yes. that and could you tell tell us more about uh, how did you manage did you want it to, to generate the cables or didn't you uh, I, I didn't want to make them uh, it just uh, I think that the thing is that in real images it's like a static object which is like constantly appearing in the real images so GAN network tries to uh, apply it also on, on simulated images because it's uh, almost in every real image. So it just thinks, oh, it's look, it makes it look more realistic. So why shouldn't I add it? Yeah, and I guess I, I kind so, of expected it to have even more cables on the ground, uh, to be honest. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Um, it's hard to predict this kind of things, but uh, one thing I learned that uh, like when you're making a data set to train GAN, if you want uh, to appear it more uh, in uh, synthetic images, it can be static, but uh, you need to like move them around, move around the objects. You need to maybe remove it completely from the image if uh, you want to reduce the effect of that object in the synthetic image. Right, let me check if you have any questions. We have the first question. Let me switch uh, the view for you. Okay, I, yeah, I can read the question. Um, why Denmark? Uh, so actually I did uh, my Erasmus uh, program in Denmark and uh, I quite like the university in Denmark uh, because um, I'm more interested in uh, robotics and artificial intelligence. Uh, the University of Southern Denmark is, uh, is in Europe at least, it's quite uh, strong in robotics. They have quite uh, talented people there. So I wanted to proceed my master's there, and the, the, and the, and it's nice opportunity because uh, masters in Denmark is free, so uh, it's it's not that hard to move there and uh, uh, support yourself. Uh, so like the overall is not that hard, and the quality is uh, quite high. And uh, the second part of the question, I didn't completely understand. Uh, what's your opinion about ImageNet? Oh, about oh, the. Okay, so I think I understand. So, you, you mean like about pre trained uh, networks? Uh, it's usually, I would say, it's nice that. Uh, object uh, recognition can be trained on these huge data sets but uh, if you want really high accuracy on like on specific uh, objects uh, as i mentioned like for uh, this specific duck uh, if you use a pre-trained network it will work but not uh, reliably all the time uh, you still need to uh, oh, like fine-tune it or um, or even train from completely from zero uh, network to make it uh, robust and uh, and detected with high accuracy. So this uh, and then you stumble upon upon this problem that you need uh, samples. That's why uh, this uh, this topic came to me for master thesis. Uh, because I also worked in a company where you have to detect some very specific objects and sometimes even pre-trained network uh, can can do a great job at it. Uh, 
Right, so thanks for your answer. Uh, I guess we can uh, have the last five minutes for general, see if more questions appear and if we don't have more questions uh, in a few minutes, uh, then it was so like, again, thank you both for uh, your presentations it was really interesting. Uh, actually quite, uh, quite different uh, presentation, like, I guess both related with robotics, but uh, quite a different, uh, you know, uh, ideas uh, which you tackled in your presentation. So it was really interesting uh, to learn more about, uh, at least for me, this is uh, robotics is quite uh, the field which I know very little about and uh, was nice to learn more. Uh, so thanks. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> you are this. Yeah, that's probably all the questions which we uh, are going to get today. So let's do a final check. Yep, I think that's it. So thank you guys and see you in the next events uh, from uh, Artificial Intelligence Association. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>